Business Now is brought to you by the Information Technology Association of America, business development, networking, and public policy leadership for today's IT industry, and in part by Sprint, together with Nextel. Stay connected, stay informed, and in cooperation with the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, PBS, and Maryland Public Television. Welcome to Business Now Capital Edition. I'm Gary Nuremberg with our first report in 2008 about the economic partnership between Uncle Sam and the private sector. Here's a prediction for the new year. Somebody is going to do something stupid, taxpayers will pay for it, and government contracting will get another black eye because of it. And even though it will get a lot of attention, it's still the exception in a process that generally works well, providing far more successes than failures and saving taxpayers tens of billions of dollars through IT solutions that measurably improve government performance. Now that big picture also shows government contracting to be the driving force in our regional economy, propelling the greater Baltimore, Washington area to number one in the United States for entrepreneurship as ranked by Inc. Magazine. Last year, federal spending on technology in the region was nearly $55 billion, only a modest increase in real growth, but Dr. Stephen Fuller of George Mason University says technology is still the fastest growing sector of the area economy. Today, we'll look at the big picture through the eyes of two distinguished women leaders in the IT industry. One is president of one of the largest government contractors, the other a founder and CEO of an entrepreneurial high growth company which is solving highly classified and complex challenges for DOD. After that, we'll look back on some of the great business success stories of 2007. But first, Phil Bond, the president and CEO of the Information Technology Association of America, talks with Donna Morea, CEO of CGI Americas, which is ranked as one of the largest IT companies in the world. And it's clear that she enjoys the rigors and challenges of a demanding job. Well, my job is a lot of fun. Uh, I have responsibility for all of CGI's operations in the U.S. and India. Mm -hmm. uh, I have clients uh, that span uh, uh, the spectrum of industries from government clients at all levels, uh, commercial clients, financial services clients, uh, banking, insurance, telecommunications clients. I have a fabulous team and most importantly we work together with our clients to make a difference. So we have a blast. We, we just have a do. blast. Dr. Stephen Fuller from George Mason University here locally compares the government spend in IT of about 70 billion dollars to the world's largest R&D program. Is that the big picture? What's the big picture you see? Let me just say that I've been in working in government for over 25 years and I do believe that uh, Stephen Fuller's comment is true today and can be even more true mm -hmm. tomorrow. We are working together on programs with government where we bring the best of private sector ideas um, married with the experts and the missions of government to solve very, very complex problems together. And let me give you an example sure. of one program where I think um, uh, we really illustrate what Stephen Fuller was talking about. Uh, we are very, very active with the federal government in uh, their initiative in financial management, which was first called Lines of Business mm -hmm. and now called uh, Shared Services. And the, there were several ideas behind that, that program. One idea was to move from originally building custom systems mm -hmm. to then using off-the-shelf systems to buying once and using many. And that's the whole concept behind this uh, shared services uh, environment. So in that regard, are there some ways maybe the federal government is actually head of the private sector? In some ways it is. Um, I would say there is a common thread whether you work with government or commercial clients, and that is the tension between the enterprise as a whole right 
and the operating units um, as independent stovepipes. What's nice about this model, and, and frankly I think it's better than some of the commercial models, is that the buying agencies have a choice. Mm -hmm. there, it's, they do not have to have one solution fits all. You talk about silos um, and the need to do some information sharing. Some of the folks who watch this show who work with those agencies maybe haven't bought into that vision yet and want to keep that information in their agency. What would you say to them? Well, anytime there's big change, there are always some people who are the early adopters, uh, some people who jump on later in the bandwagon, and then some people who never will jump on the bandwagon. <laughs> but it's been our experience, particularly in this kind of a program, that success breeds success. And so where do we go next? Well, I think one of the trends that we're going to see in government, and frankly, uh, we've seen it uh, much more of as a tidal wave in the commercial sector is the move toward managed services. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, I won't use the word outsourcing uh, because that is a dirty word uh, to some in government. Yeah. But the truth is that uh, as you look at the population providing uh, the IT services in government, it's aging um, and shrinking. The resources uh, allocated to IT are tightening and uh, the pressures to implement things quicker and faster with less risk is also increasing. So you add all those things together and you add a private sector that has the tools and capabilities and competencies uh, to assist in, in, um, uh, in, in, this, you know, in this environment and you actually have something that works. Today we're in a time when some people are questioning the role of contractors specifically. Even though you and I might say it is the best of the private sector working with the best of the public sector, politically that's under fire and people are really questioning the role of contractors. Talk to me a little bit about the environment right now for federal contractors. Our government partners are getting more practical about how we marry the politics and getting getting the job done. And our goal is to uh, not necessarily take jobs away mm -hmm. from people in government, but uh, more to enable them to do the core mission. And I think that's a very, very fundamental element of how you deal with the politics. Mm -hmm. um, another area, a very sensitive area, of course, is moving jobs away from uh, the United States mm -hmm. and offshore. And so one of the things that we have done in response to that uh, is to look at creating the same kind of business value that can be created through offshore services, but by doing them on the home shore. I like that, Donna, home shoring, uh, competing against offshoring. At ITA, we recently did a study on just that question, looking at whether or not some rural U.S. settings could do IT work at a cost competitive way vis-a-vis uh, -vis those uh, offshore and around the world. And we found indeed there are some options, there are places where it does work. One of those happened to be Southwest Virginia and that just also happens to be a place that you're engaged. Tell us about yeah. that. Well, as part of our partnership with the Commonwealth of Virginia, we thought we could do well by doing good and so we have established a center of excellence, a software engineering center of excellence in Russell County in Lebanon, Virginia. And in that center of excellence, we perform very, very high-end software design, development, and testing. Uh, we opened the center about a year ago. Uh, we have 200 people working in the center. Uh, we originally thought we would scale up to about 300 uh, within two years, two to three years, and in fact, uh, we're accelerating a lot faster and we'll probably hit uh, 375 uh, uh, within 30 months. So it's a win all the way around. Uh, let's talk about the government piece of that in particular, your engagement with the Old Dominion, the state of Virginia. Because from what I understand, this is really a, an overhaul that, you've, uh, that you're applying to the entire government enterprise, a, a real transformation that must include at least 100 agencies. Tell us a little bit about this work with Virginia. There are a couple of unique aspects to this engagement, one of which is that part of the funding comes from the legislature, but part of the funding comes out of, of savings, savings and benefits that we generate. 
both savings in terms of the efficiencies that we gain through more improved use of technology and business processes, and also benefits that we can uh, identify and, and achieve in areas like revenue generation. Based on what you've seen in the past, what do you see coming down the pike? What kinds of changes, uh, new e-government applications, whatever, what, what do you see coming in government? I think the federal government um, is really embracing uh, using e-government for citizen services and figuring out ways to extend those citizen services into broader and broader areas. Uh, in, I think it was 1999, we first started working with CMS, part of HHS, um, on this uh, small idea for a portal for Medicare. And um, uh, seven, eight years, almost eight years later, uh, we now have over 15 million, um, uh, 15 million hits a month. Uh, what was really mostly a, 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 a portal to transmit very, very uh, small sets of information um, and uh, uh, pretty, pretty focused on a few aspects of the program has become broader and broader. Obviously, uh, you care a lot about diversity, you're a role model for women in IT. Uh, what do we need to do to get more women in IT? As you think about the problem, obviously, uh, the first place to start is to get more and more uh, young women into technology programs. Can government really compete with companies like yours for that kind of talent? I think that the art for government is to um, focus on actually the acquisition function. Mm -hmm. I think that's the I think that's the key that unlocks the secret <laughs> uh, to this to this puzzle. Uh, so if 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 I were in charge for one day. <laughs> Um, I would absolutely put at the top of my agenda uh, retooling and reinventing and, um, and enhancing uh, the government acquisition uh, community because that, in fact, is where the savvy needs to come from. We talk a lot, Donna, in this segment about bringing the best of the private sector to the public sector because when it comes to information technology, the, the notion, of course, is that the real innovation takes place in the private sector. You have insight into both of those worlds. So what, what's next? What should we be bringing from the pi private sector into the public sector? With minor, uh, minor modifications, we were able to take the solution called uh, CACS, mm -hmm. our uh, uh, computer-assisted collection system, and um, uh, make it work in revenue organizations, both in the states and in the federal government. Uh, in fact, today, as of today, uh, this system is the underpinning of the collections operations in 20 states, including uh, the Commonwealth of Virginia. Uh, to the extent that we keep records on the business, uh, the business successes, uh, we um, have uh, recorded over $1.5 billion in increased collections uh, through the use of this system. And I guess that's exactly the way it works. You generate results and you generate savings along the way, but you've also created a number of, a significant number of jobs in the local economy. In fact, as I say that, that's really what we've seen right here in Northern Virginia. I moved to this area over 20 years ago and uh, uh, frankly the growth in this uh, industry here in the Northern Virginia area is phenomenal. And in fact, uh, you know, we've created a whole we've created a whole economy in the Northern Virginia area around around IT, and that has it has uh, more benefits than appear on the surface uh, when you just think about uh, you know what we're doing uh, in partnership with the government, uh, because we really have created an environment where there are collaborations with the universities, uh, where we're providing input into the curriculum into R&D, where graduates are coming out, um, uh, creating uh, more opportunities, uh, building new companies, recruiting more students, funding more research. So it's a, it's a truly virtuous, truly virtuous cycle. And um, it's been great fun to be here in Northern Virginia over, over that period.